as promised, we are going to do a little bit of a longer video here in Leroy Murrith. If you don't know who we are, it's Aaron and Anissa from Countryside Acres. Drywall, there you go. So, large roll, 120 rubles. So yeah, this is for the whole roll. So that works out to, let's see here, about, if I work that out right, that's about a dollar and 80 cents Canadian. That's really cheap. Oh yeah, anyway, looking at drywall here now. Guess I wasn't recording. Looking at drywall, I was talking to another fella and he says they come in odd size. So he came from Australia where they do use the metric system. Uh, this means nothing to me, by the way. Like I can't convert that into studs. So a lot of people say, well, just get used to it. Well, yeah, but you spent your whole life doing something a certain way. Let's see, you learned how to ride a bike uh, the way everybody rides a bike forward. And now you move somewhere and you have to do it backwards. And it's just hard. It's doable. I'm sure it's doable. Well, that's maybe a bad example. But everything's doable, but it takes time. I've built houses since I was 14. Houses and barns, I'm used to doing it a certain way. And now I have to switch that, which is fine. I'm, I'm perfectly fine with switching it. It just that's not that easily done. I can't just stand here in the store and look at this and say, oh yeah, that'll fit here, because these, these numbers mean nothing to me. Yes, Canada is metric, but we in the building industry use Imperial. We do not use metric. We use feet and inches in the building industry. And everything is laid out uh, by feet. So we know that. Uh, our studs are either 16 inch on center or they're two feet on center. Our uh, insulation comes either 16 inch on center or two foot on center. So here everything's obviously different because it's a completely different system, which is fine, but I have no idea what it means yet. So in this case, it's 2,500 by 1,200 by nine and a half, whatever that means. But he told me they use a different measurement than they do in Australia. Uh, so they have to lay their studs out now differently here than they would there, which is interesting as well because they're both metric systems. One thing I noticed, they do use a lot of metal studs. I've seen that quite a bit, as opposed to wood studs. Uh, I have only personally done that in industrial buildings, but there is a lot of benefits to using metal studs. For one, they don't warp. Wooden studs have a tendency of twisting on you, whereas these guys don't. So I think it's a great idea. And we, we do have it, it's just not as commonly available. I'd have to, uh, I'd have to specially, but I'd have to specially order metal studs. My local hardware stores would only carry wood. Uh, two by fours and stuff and this would be something I'd have to order and like I said on a commercial job for a factory or something then we use a lot of metal studs Here like a drywall like we have back home this is uh, uh, what do you want to call it water resistant for like a bathroom or it's more mold resistant I suppose so 487 rubles for that so I guess you guys can't see that but anyway 47 so roughly seven dollars for a sheet and that looks approximately close to a 4x8 sheet. If I got this right, this is a thousand by 600. And the 600 works out to two feet. So this would actually be a two foot on the center, which would work. And the thousand, uh, what the heck would that be? Got to think about that one too. Okay, well, in either case, it's a thousand mils, so nine uh, that's that's a hundred centimeters, 90 centimeters is three feet, so this is like 3.3 feet. So, our sheets would come uh, of, of insulation would come two feet by four feet or two uh, or 16 inches by four feet. If you're not familiar with inches, 16 inches, so there's two and a half centimeters per inch. So again, it's convertible. So the guy I was talking to about this, he said the same thing. It's doable, but he even he even grew up with metric on a job site. I did not. I grew up with only inches and feet on a job site. But he says it's doable, but because they lay things out still differently, you still have to spend a lot of time thinking about, okay, now hang on a minute, what is this one? What is that? And it just makes the job take a lot longer, right? Uh, now he recommended, and it makes total sense, if we're just building for ourselves, our own house or our own farm, just go with inches, you know what you're doing, and just build it the way you want to build it. And it's like, yeah, that makes good sense. I don't think I'll ever do contracting here for other people. Um, 
maybe one of my sons will, but uh, I think I'll just build for ourselves and that'll be good. And lots of this kind of fake brick stuff, it's actually plastic. I think a lot of this stuff has come a long way, it looks really realistic. Uh, I'm not a big fan of it myself, but it is kind of neat how you can do a house like that and it looks like, uh, like real. I actually don't see that many vinyl sided houses. There's a lot of wood and a lot of brick homes. You know, like this is all vinyl siding, which I would say almost the majority of the houses being built in Canada are now using siding. So that is an interesting difference as well. What is this? Well, that's a great question. I have no idea. Yeah, it might be something for septic. Yeah, have we seen it? They were pulling it out of that cement. Oh, yeah, see, day. this might this sit on part, this. Here's a tank. This. Yeah, so this probably sits in the ground, that sits over it, and then that sits on top. That's exactly what it is. We've seen that's all rubber, eh? That's, that's just rubber or plastic or something. We've seen them pulling it out the other day there you with go. that high hole or whatever. Mm -hmm. I didn't realize it had a lip on it like that. More battles again. That's landscape fabric? Yeah. Oh, nice. How many, uh, how many feet? Uh huh. Yeah. How many meters on a roll? Uh, yeah, a 25 we, we meter have roll. That in Canada, though, too. Even like buying a rug and stuff like that. Yeah, some of that is because that's yeah, not the building yeah, industry. Yeah, but even these, like the mats. Because we and are stuff, metric. I, but yeah. I would even ask you, I remember last time, I'm like, okay, how big is this garden yeah. mat going to be? So. That stuff would be metric, but things like 2x4s, uh, plywood, OSB, yeah. insulation, drywall, yep. it's all done in exactly. feet. Exactly. Yeah. It's so funny, I never really think of it how much it's. You know, mixed up and yeah, well, it's, it's really dumb. It's yeah. because we used to be imperial and then they switched yeah. to metric, and then I still now we have both. Yeah, and it's my like they should have still do, yeah. A lot of the old timers will talk fuel in gallons, yeah. yeah. All right, it's before our time. I think I looked into it, I think it was in the 60s, maybe late 60s. I'm not sure, but they switched it over. So all our fuel used to be sold in gallons, uh, but that's before my time. I grew up with liters. Uh, we have kilometers, we use kilometers when we're driving. Uh, basically, everything's metric. But then you get, get overlaps, especially like building industry is a big one that I know of. Everything is still uh, done the old way. And I would assume that's because of the neighbors to the south. So a lot of the lumber that we cut gets shipped to the States. We sell lots and lots of softwood lumber to the States from Canada. And uh, that, that's why I'm sure we have their, their way of doing things. And then a lot of their factories build stuff that would be used in the Canadian industry. So uh, I'm sure that's why there's an overlap. As far as jars and things too, you do pints. There's pints and there's gallon jars and there's liters and uh, you know, well, so that can because the kids' curriculum was American. Right. Yeah, so our children' we're... homeschooling curriculum is an American curriculum, so right. they get to learn that. Not a big deal. It's just a lot to get used to. Are really neat, I find. Throw these in your laneway. Uh, I've seen guys do them in a garage when you're building the garage. And you put these in the end when you pour your cement floor, and then you have a nice drain for your shop floor. Pull these all out, wash it out, put them back in. Yeah, yeah, there's lots of these. This type of roofing is really nice. Gives it that old shake look. I always like that. Like this up here. It's beautiful. So we've already been informed this is not the place to buy roofing. There's much cheaper places to do it. Um, but we're here. We're just showing what this store has to offer. We were actually spoiled because locally, uh, the last two farms that we owned, we had a guy locally that made this. And so whatever lengths you needed, they would just roll it off exactly to your size. So I would measure off a roof. We've done a lot of roofing for other people and for our own. Measure off exactly what we need. He'd cut it exactly to those lengths. Saves a lot of time. More sidings, shingles, three tabs. Yeah, the three tab shingle. Well, I would imagine they have the architectural style shingle too, but they're, oh, they're probably down this aisle. We can't get there. One thing I really love that I've never seen is the windows here. So you, you open this window and it opens normally. Yes, that's nothing unusual. But if you crank, oh, this one doesn't do it. 
There we go. Okay, so you crank this up. If you go in the middle, it opens normally. And if you lift it upwards, then the top comes out. Which is great for like this time of year, you don't need the whole window open, but this lets a lot of heat out and a lot of cool air in. And that might seem like a small accomplishment, but I had never seen a window like that until we went to Georgia. Now, they do not have the windows I'm used to. The windows we're used to buying, they don't, I haven't found, uh, which is fine. I guess I really like these windows. Oh, here's Mama. I lost her. Uh, I really like these. They're kind of neat. What have you found, Mama? Ooh, we were told they don't exist. I had a guy looking for windows for us. They do exist. Oh yeah, but these are really thin. That's a single glass. This is more for like a patio. Yeah, so we would have windows that open like this, sliders. Sliders, and then also the other way, flipped it the other way, you'd have single hung or double hung. A single hung window only opens from the bottom up, and a double hung, the top will come down. The top will come down and the bottom will come up, so you can have them both open and for circulation. And then this is a double slider. But these are not, this is not insulated glass. This is like for a patio or something, not double layered. That's how uh, most of our windows come. You can get other windows. We have crank out windows, so they're horrible. The window will go out with a crank on them, mm. but a lot of times the gears will strip and they go outside. So if you get high winds in a place like Southern Alberta, the wind picks up and grabs a hold of your window and it strips these gears. So then you have to change this out, put a new one in. So lots of in stock stuff, I guess. Here you can show, so this would be a double pane glass with a layer of gas in between to keep you warm. This is triple pane and two layers of gas to keep you warm. This is, has a much higher R value is how we measure insulation. Now I mentioned that to a local guy here, R value, he had no idea what I was talking about. So I guess they have a different term for it, obviously. And I don't know yet what that is, but uh, this one would have less R value than this one because it's more insulated. I'm gonna say just it's right here because this is down to minus 20 minus or minus 20 to plus 20. We've actually never installed a triple glazed or triple pane window in our house. Uh, and he said I never been that cold that we felt we needed it. We've always just done double. But a lot of people do triple and it does give you uh, that much more insulation. OSB flooring. So here again 2500 by 1250 very similar to a 4x8. I think it's a couple inches off one way or the other. And once you know that, it's not an issue because you just lay your, your studs or your joists out accordingly and everything will go together. No problem. This we don't find that often. So these are only roughly two feet wide, but they're tongue and groove. We would buy them tongue and groove. Uh, so you can see groove, groove, tongue. And we would buy these in 4x8 sheets to lay down on our floors. I'm very much looking forward to building again. Whether it's building a house or renovating a house, getting going on something. And this we found was, was odd as well. I don't know, I would like someone to explain that to me someday. Why you would have, this is like a five foot by five foot sheet. In our language, 1525 by 1525, why? It seems like an odd size. And there must be reason for it. Again, that's not a complaint either. I don't really care what size it is. It's fine, we just work around it. But we have our, uh, ooh, I'm gonna look at those things next, I see that. But we have our whole s industry set up on 16 inch centers. So you lay out a, a building 16, 32, 48, all the way through, and that also matches up with two foot, four foot. All right, so 16, 32, 48, 48 is four feet. And so you can either lay your building out two foot, like on two foot centers or on 16 inch centers, and you still end up on uh, the four foot mark and the eight foot mark for our building materials. So here, I don't know, I'm not sure. I'll figure that out. But I was talking about, I always thought these were cool. The fold away stairs into the attic. But yes, we have those. Although they're not easily found. It must be more common here, because I've never seen, you ever seen a hardware store where they have them on display like that? No. No, I usually have to ask specifically for them. I think they're great because you don't have a staircase in your way all the time. You can just just fold the way up into the attic. Oh, they got a bunch of neat ones over here. Very nice. <coughs> a couple more neat styles. 
pre-flap. This one's kind of neat. Bungees up and in. Pretty cool. And this is neat too, all the different designs there you do. This place has got a load of everything. Tons and tons of stuff. Some people wanted more prices. Hey, here's baby gates, huh? Feels sturdy too. Whoops, I forgot to get the bottom one in. You can change it too. Move it Different size, yeah. Yeah, I like it. Feels sturdy. We've had one like this, and I find that they're not that great. You see how just they're just floppy. Kids get climbing on them and stuff. But this one's nice. I really like that. The other option is not to have stairs. I suppose. Little trims. Plastic trims. Oh, they still sell paneling too. Actually, I like using this stuff for ceilings. I don't know if you can tell that one. That was Anissa's idea. She designs the homes. I have to put them together. Paneling was the big rage in the 80s. 80s, 90s, I think 80s. <laughs> I've never been a fan of paneling. But we do use it in certain uh, like accent walls and things like that. People still sell it, and I actually know somebody who recently renovated their house and put a lot of paneling in their basement. It's just, it just was simpler for them than doing drywall. doors uh, and I think it's because most people live in apartments here that's my guess uh, because we did drive through a subdivision the other day and I seen some exterior doors with glass uh, but I, I've not seen them in OBI or here they don't have glass they're a solid steel door so we would have uh, at least a half glass or uh, or all the way sometimes whereas this mostly steel and it's probably because you're in an apartment building I wouldn't if I was in an apartment, I would want a door like this because I don't want anyone looking in my window. But if you're in the, in the country, then having glass here is just one more door. There you go. Yeah, there's one. So this, this is a very typical, extremely typical door for us. Except these. Look how fat that is. Wowzers. That is a phenomenal big door. It's like a freezer door, right? That's crazy. Wow. Look at the security on it. Anyway, other than that, like this is a, a six pane glass. One, two, three, four, five, six, oh, nine, sorry. This is a very typical door for us. And, and our display would be, majority would look like this, or variations of it. Some of them would have different patterns in them and you know different types of glass, but. The keys are neat, eh? I love these keys. I'd say nobody's getting in that one. It's like a bank vault door. Dirty. The hall over. Wow, nice door. Yeah. Is that when I when we lived in Georgia, we locked the door. Mm -hmm. We left, and our our children were at home, so we would lock the door. Ah, yes. Well, they do have this. Oh, they had this one. The one door that in Georgia. In Georgia, it only had a key in the top and the bottom. It didn't yeah, have to this. Yeah, lock from the outside, it only had this option. Yes. It didn't have this lock to unlock it on the inside. So I was like, what well, the kids needed out. It didn't have that? No. Uh, that's why I said if they needed out, they had to go through the window. Right? Like, like because we wanted to lock it in. Right. Does this one lock from the outside? No, and this one doesn't. Okay. So this one can only lock from the inside. Yeah, this one. But you can then do this when you're inside. You can do this to lock mm -hmm. it again. Uh, when we have the other lock. So that particular scenario she's talking about, we went away, uh, I think we had a meeting to go to, and the kids were at home. And so uh, they were going to be going to sleep. 
and so we locked the door from the outside. Uh, normally speaking, they could lock it from the inside, I guess, but uh, because they were going to be sleeping, we wouldn't be able to get in. So we locked the door from the outside, but they didn't have uh, anything on the inside in order to open it. So there was no way for them to get out if there was a problem. Now, it, the apartment was uh, ground level, so they can hop out the window in that case. But if you were up you know, on the sixth floor or something, you can't hop out the window. Yeah, so, well, this one has double. Right? So many people the bottom can is, yeah. lock it in and lock it in. This one's possible. Yeah. But what, we're, we don't have this on the inside. We don't have keys, keyholes on the inside. We have this. Our bolt locks and stuff and our door locks have a, uh, a turn. What are, what are we going to call this, I guess? We have this on the inside and on the outside we have the keyhole. Mm -hmm. And so whoever's on the inside can always unlock it. Yeah. So this is different. But I like the security on it. Ain't nobody getting in that. Mm -hmm. Interesting. I can't believe how big that door is. What's the price tag on that thing? Probably not cheap. No, there's no price on it. Too much. They didn't want to scare us away. Okay, so that one's fifty-two, almost fifty-three thousand, but it's not nearly as thick. Oh, there's prices on the inside. All right, here. seventy-nine thousand rubles. That's almost $1,200 Canadian for this door, which is really pricey for an exterior door. But obviously, when I'm talking an exterior door, our doors are like maybe this wide. This thing is like huge door. So we don't need nothing like this, but I would like one with a window in it. Just a glass, another, another window. Let more light in the house, it's nice. Very sturdy. What else we got? What'd you find? Laundry stuff? No. Yeah. Yeah. Looking forward to that, having a laundry room. Look at that cute little guy. That was neat. options showing you the plumbing obviously that's not a finished <laughs> product but just showing you how they're routing it just on a roll uh, yeah kind of Most of the things are very similar to what we have, eh? Not so much different. Well, yeah. About $105 roughly for an average size, or average toilet. Cheaper over there, more expensive over there. Ooh, and then we get the golden throne over here. This guy really costs a lot. Of course, it's got some fancy buttons on it. Man, see, they put the tank in the back. Yeah, it's actually neat because that really cleans up the bathroom, and you don't have to have a, a tank. I find these tanks kind of, I don't know, they get dirty. Yeah, they are. Hers are much well. No, we have stuff like this, don't we? Well, it's still pretty small, I guess. Yeah, but I find we waste a lot of water. Europe's much bigger on saving water. Urinals, great idea. Yeah, this is neat too. This is almost like a like a tub mm -hmm. you can bathe the kids in. Before. So bad. 
I don't convert all the numbers, so just so you know, about a thousand rubles is roughly 15 Canadian dollars. Uh, I'm not sure what it is into America, and you'll have to work that out, but uh, for all of our Canadian viewers, a thousand rubles, 15 bucks, so you can kind of do the math on everything you see. A lot of you asked for a comparison on prices. And what we have here uh, compared to what you have at home. There's a couple of comments, people suggesting, well, why are you comparing everything? Well, why not? There's people over there that want to know what's available here. And uh, before they move their families, they'd like to see it. We did a lot of that too. We watched a lot of videos from people that were living here, seeing what was available, what was similar, what was different. Uh, it's not complaining. It's not uh, saying Canada's better or Russia's better. It's just comparing notes to see what's available here and what's available there. I don't really see why that's an issue. Is this real wood? No. Mm -hmm. No, just a particle. Eh? Yeah, it looks like, oh, that's neat. I like that. Look at that. Mm -hmm. It goes around the, around the plumbing. That makes total sense. Yeah. The bottom one too? Yeah. No, the bottom one's whole. Yeah, I really like that. Oh my, look how small the sinks are. Where were we? We did a rental job. We needed a sink like this. Look how tiny this thing is compared to my hand. I forget where we were. We rented a house and we needed a small sink. And it wasn't available. Yeah, like that. That would have been perfect. We needed a sink like this. Yeah. And we could not find one. There's one thing here. They're used to small spaces because there's so many uh, apartments. Everything fits, like in Europe too. Netherlands, same thing. They have a lot more uh, compact stuff that fits in small areas because there's only so much space. Underneath the sink, yeah, that's neat too. Yeah, I like this. And then you can still keep your soap. Yeah, it makes total sense. This is plastic, isn't it? That feels like plastic. Oh, just that part is. Yeah. Very practical. Indeed. Well, first guy that I worked for in construction, no, second guy, uh, we built houses and uh, everything started to finish. So I learned so much from him uh, and I've always been very thankful for that to fall back on in the rentals that we've done. One thing I learned was tiling. We did a lot of tiles in bathrooms and, and uh, backsplashes in bathroom or in uh, kitchens and stuff. So anyway, I really like this pattern. I wouldn't mind doing something like that. You're not as big of a fan of tile, eh? Because stuff breaks when you drop it on it. But... Mm, I'm actually becoming more of a favorite because it's, um, I don't know, it's easy to clean. Yeah. And you get wet, it doesn't, like, deteriorate. Right. right? Certain flooring. Yeah, do. things, I find that in this apartment, everything's been broken. I feel so bad because we, like, break dishes left, right, and center. It's like it doesn't go on a day without breaking one dish on the top. Well, I'd maybe exaggerate a little bit, but yeah. Well... I don't know. You drop a cup on it and they smash. Yeah. They're not forgiving, that's for sure. Actually, that's why you um, get switched to stainless cups. Yeah. We have stainless cups and stainless dishes uh, at our last place. I brought them. Yeah, you brought them there. Because uh, kids are dropping, it just happens. They drop one accidentally, but then it's smashed, right? So if you go with stainless, then at least it just hits the ground. It might have a dent, but that's it. So, anyway, lots of interesting patterns there. And even ones that look like fake wood. No, they don't look like fake wood. They look like real wood. But they are fake wood. Which is neat as well. Loads of linoleum. Oh boy, I'm running out of power. Anyway, I showed you guys that in OBI. I don't imagine the prices would be much, much different here. But it's an amazing store full of a lot of stuff. Here's some click flooring made of actual plywood. Interesting. I don't recall having seen that. We have uh, a lot of just, what do you call it? It's like sawdust pressed together into flooring. When that stuff gets wet, it's horrible. This would be a more solid for sure. Doesn't look like what? No. Oh, it has the lip on it too. Yeah, yeah. Huge flooring section. Though. Now, one thing I am interested in, uh, one of the places we're looking at, we have a few options on the table. One we're looking at, it has a concrete floor, so uh, we'd like to maybe put in-floor heat in it. And so laying insulation down, I know back in Canada we can get, uh, yeah, it's got a layer of insulation and plywood on top of it stuck together. 
and you can lay that down on like a basement floor to just get you off the concrete so it's not as cold on your feet. So I wanted to see if they have something like that. I'm sure they do. Okay, no, I didn't see it. We do have some kitchen stuff here. Again, we found some nice ones the other day. And loads of built-in stuff like that. Actually, this kitchen which people are looking at was one we really like the colors of. Backsplash included. I really like that one. That was a nice one to look at. Oh, that's practical too. Yes and no. I find that they fall through and stuff, but... True, but I like the idea of the... Right? Think how many of our sinks do not have a top drawer mm -hmm. because the sink's in the way. Yeah. It just makes total sense. You can put a lot of stuff in there. Yeah. I like it. It's more practical. And again, because it's safe, uh, space saving. All right, that's why they would do it. How do you get these one open? Oh, there's a handle there. Oh, okay, good. Yeah. Mm, interesting. Drapes and blinds. That's a nice story. Eh? Uh, I sell all of that here, dude. Mm -hmm. You heard one in Georgia too, and they sold loads of wallpaper. We have wallpaper, but only at like special stores, eh? So expensive. Very expensive, true, yeah. And I don't think you find anybody uses it. Maybe because it's so expensive, it could be. Well, and they only, sure. they only sell like small little rolls. Right, right, right. Yeah. My mother used wallpaper when we were kids. So, anyway, I think that tours it. Hope you guys enjoyed once again touring a little bit more of this place. Yeah, pressure washers, vacuums. We could spend days in here. Unfortunately, the battery's dying, so I'm going to end this thing. But I uh, hope you guys enjoyed seeing a little bit more in depth on this store. And I uh, hope you guys enjoy all our content. At some point, we really are hoping to get out on the farm, especially now that spring is here. We want to get planting and get started on our farm, get animals. And uh, that's our hope and prayer. So if you wish to pray for us in some way, pray that we can get that very quickly. And we would be very happy to, uh, to get going on it. God bless you guys. Catch you in the next one. Can I tell you what's been on my mind? Sick and tired of the nine to five in the city light. Darling, we could get out of town, see the beautiful world around, want to see it now. Pack our bags and get in that car, leave a little note and we'll drive real far. Let's get out, we can leave this city, let's drive to the open. Yeah, the country sounded so pretty With the wind blowing in your hair We can look back someday Baby, don't you understand That we only get one life I wanna make it count, honey Come on now and take my hand Hey, darling I love it when it's me and you on the road with a couple of tunes in a car for two Hey darling You know we're gonna have a really good time Driving in the middle of the night when the stars are bright Pack our bags and get in that car